we have a proverb. It goes like this. A house without a mother looks like an animal coming to swallow you. We're looking at about two million orphaned children in Uganda alone. And uh, some of them have lost both parents and the others have lost one parent. Down in the southwest corner that we're in, there's well over 30,000 uh, orphan children just in that Kabali area. <laughs> Often children are more likely to be abused. They're more likely to be dragged into armed conflict. If they lose both parents and there is no one to take care of them, they'll end up in child-headed households um, with no adult. Children sometimes fend for themselves. They might survive, they might leave, but they don't have much hope. We are not a religious organization. We are a non-profit charitable organization. And our mission statement is to help orphaned and vulnerable children in the southwestern area of Uganda. Our organization is composed of two major parts, the U.S. organization and the Uganda organization. We have the Oversight Committee, which is 13 professionals in the Uganda area, and they give oversight and guidance to our two administrators. We have two paid staff people, two women who administer the Adopt an Orphan program. The local committee selects the children that are most in need and submits that name to the Oversight Committee. We take first those who are the total orphans, and then we go to those with one parent, so we select the, the poor child from the poorest of those who are applying. Who is the most needy of these children that have been brought to us? They go on a wait list. That wait list is sent over here with the child's profile. And the donor then gets to select which child that they want to sponsor. $350 a year is what we have as a person makes a donation and that provides for all our, the child's costs for a full year. First of all, we make sure that this child has a place to live. Through our foster home care, we make sure that this child has a family where he or she feels comfortable. Also, part of our mission is to give them an education. We do pay the school fees. We pay for their basic supplies. The kids are in boarding schools because they're in a rural area and they can't walk, you know, 10 miles to school. When they are at boarding school, they get much better and consistent care, and they're also in better schools. They came without anything, like clothing and even shoes. So the project has managed to buy shoes for some of our children. They get good meals, housing, they get their school uniforms, and they get medical care. So now they read properly, they write English, they speak English. In their uniforms, they look so smart. And you can tell from their attitude and the way they carry themselves what that means to them. Once a term, the child will write a letter to their sponsor. They may say a little bit about what their life is like, how things are going in school. In their letters, they refer to us as their parents which is so endearing to us, you know. And uh, they don't hide their feelings when they are writing. They are always expressing their gratitude from their heart. The donors can see the progress of the kids and see where their money is going to. The letters get to be more comprehensive, better expressed. You know, you can see the growth in the child as they develop, you know. We still have a long, long way to go. Because we have such a, a huge number, we are looking for every opportunity have that one more child. We have over a thousand children on the wait list and it really depends on our funding as to how many we can bring into the program. We need individual donors. Every single one makes a, a big difference. In Uganda and countries like it that have been really hard hit by the AIDS epidemic, they've lost a lot of their professional class. If 
nobody's educating the kids. Who are going to be the teachers of the future? Who are going to be the nurses of the future? I would like to be a doctor. I would like to be a nurse. I would like to be an engineer. Education will give them an opportunity to become self-sufficient and productive members of the society. We expect a lot from these children. They're ambitious. I would like to be a lawyer. I would like to be a doctor if God wishes in the future. This is the country of tomorrow. We have to invest in the young people. What to us might be a relatively small amount of money makes a huge amount of difference. You're paying for a child's future. We're seeing the first wave now of children who are graduating from high school. We had 24 this year. One of our, of our kids who went through the program, she finished, she's going to the nursing school. One of them did really well and she's getting a scholarship, you know, to go to a university. The education is getting some place with these kids. I could not imagine that I could ever go in a high school. I didn't speak English, but now I can. They have given meaning to, to the lives of these children. And they have given them hope. And they're able to play with other children and have fun and be kids. When I got a benefactor, I was very happy that, that I could not imagine that I was the one. I experienced a good life when I reached here. I felt so happy. <laughs> I was dead, now I'm alive. And I was lost, now I'm found. It's giving someone a reason to wake up in the morning and be able to say, you know what, I'm here, and there is something in this world for me.